My name's Chris, I'm building a productivity app and I'm building it publicly. I recently posted a video on TikTok about building a Slack integration for my app. After cutting about 80% of the content, I realized I should probably go film a YouTube video about this. So let's get started. I'll give you guys some context on Ellie first. Ellie's a productivity app I'm building. It's a daily planning app. It's basically an app where I combine the calendar and to-do list experience. It's got a bunch of cool features and the two biggest ones are this Kanban view where you can see all of your days in little columns and drag tasks between them. And this calendar on the right where you can time box tasks directly onto your calendar. There's also a bunch of things like a Google Calendar and Apple integration if you wanna see your calendar events. We'll probably make another video going through all the features of that, but that's not for this video. So that's a bit of context on the app. So the feature I wanna talk about is the Slack integration, which I've been building over the last three days. First, why did I choose to build this over other features? Why is this feature important? I have a feedback board where people can leave feedback requests and then upvote the features that they wanna see and nobody has requested this Slack integration. So why am I building it? Honestly, a big reason I'm building it is because I need it. Most of my to-dos come from Slack, probably 90% of them. So someone on my team says, hey, can you go do this? I usually go create a task in Ellie to remember to do it. I've seen other integrations like the GitHub and Notion integration. Basically, you can create a GitHub issue from a Slack message, which is pretty cool. So. I've always wanted something where I can click a button and create an Ellie task from a message. So that's what I wanna build. Something I told myself when I started building the app is that I am building this for me. There's tons of users who use Ellie and I am building it for them, but most importantly, I told myself I need to build a product that I love using or else I'm gonna get bored of it and not wanna work on it. So this is a feature that I've always wanted. That's number one. Number two is that Ellie only has a Google Calendar and Apple integration. And next year, I really wanna focus on building more integrations like a Notion integration or a Todoist integration. These integrations are pretty complex, so I chose to work on the Slack integration first because after looking at the documentation for all three of them, it seems pretty easy compared to something like building a Notion integration. So this is kind of to kickstart this whole integration thing for Ellie. So those are the two reasons that we're doing it. As I record the video, 99% of the integration is done. I'm just doing a lot of checks and finishing things out. Honestly, I didn't expect to make a YouTube video out of this, but I actually learned a ton that I think would be pretty helpful for people. So the first thing I did was kind of look at the documentation and it seemed easy enough. I honestly thought I could do this in less than a day. Spoiler alert, it was substantially harder than that. Overall, the documentation, good job. It really made it feel less daunting than it was. Here's a line that really stood out to me. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. OAuth flow can feel discouragingly hard. Yeah. Reading this line actually is what made me think, hey, I think I can do this in less than a day. Again, hindsight, I was wrong, but I'm really glad that they said that because it made me actually want to build a Slack app and think, okay, cool, how hard can this be? So I started creating the Slack app. I was actually surprised by how little code and verification was needed. I thought that installing it in the workspace would be really challenging, but they give you a button, you click the button, and it actually installs the app on the workspace. Now the app can't actually do anything at this point, but it, is installed on the workspace. Like your icon will appear, everything's there. Then the next thing I did was try to figure out, okay, how am I going to make this drop down thing appear with the menu? I figured out that the thing I'm looking for is called shortcuts. So shortcuts are these little things where when you click a message, you have a bunch of actions on the message, like create a task in Ellie. So after you click the button, this modal will appear and it has all these fields. I can pick out a bunch of other fields when I'm building the task. So I was like, how does this work? Turns out all you need to do is return a JSON with all the fields and everything to build that modal. They actually have a really cool thing called block kit. So you can actually visualize what this modal or the form is gonna look like. Overall, I was surprised by how quickly I got the button to show up and then I was able to to get the modal to pop up. So testing this was a little weird. So when you click that button to create an Ellie task, it's going to hit the back end. Slack requires that you have a link that has HTTPS in it. And so localhost wasn't gonna work. One of my friends showed me this thing called ngrok. Honestly, I've heard it before, but I didn't really understand what it was doing. Literally you install ngrok on your machine. They will give you a free URL that points to localhost. The most important thing though, is that this URL has HTTPS. So this is what this looks like running. And I kid you not, you literally just run this command and it generates this URL for you. So now I can paste this into Slack. They're happy because it's a secure link. And now every time I click the button, it goes from ngrok to my local host. And now I don't have to keep deploying things over and over again just to test if this is working. So pro tip, use something like ngrok if you're building an API and it requires HTTPS. I'm 100% probably gonna have to do this for the Notion integration, to do this integration, all the other ones. So really glad I learned that. So once this was done, I had to figure out, okay, how do I like authorize this? Cause then now in theory, 
anybody in my Slack workspace can click this button, this modal will pop up. And since everything is hard coded, they can just add stuff to my account. The next thing I did was look into OAuth. I might be explaining this wrong because I kind of just learned about this like a week ago. I need a way so when I click create a task, Slack knows which Ellie account this is for and that users can't just spoof each other and someone create a task on my behalf. Although that actually does sound kind of useful for someone to be able to create a task on my behalf, but I needed a way to secure it. So they have this thing called OAuth, you have to implement it. This probably took up a ton of the time on day one. I was trying to wrap my head around this so hard. I have a feeling there's still a lot I need to learn about this. So I, I don't feel 100% confident giving you guys advice on this. If you're following the docs, they hard code all of the keys so then Every time you make a request, it's for your workspace, it's for your user. If you want to put this on another workspace, you need to remove those hard-coded keys and then use the keys that you got during this whole OAuth linking process. That was the hard concept to wrap my head around. Honestly, as I explained it back, it probably isn't that clear either. If you guys are interested, I could make a separate video about what I learned with OAuth and how it works. It would be like an hour long video though. So let me know if that's interesting and maybe I can do that. Basically, I had to redo 50% of my code to handle this whole multi-workspace type thing where there's multiple codes, I have to store the codes, I have to figure out how to do this in a good way. Even something like the settings page, I built this integrations page where you can connect your Slack app. I now realize that that doesn't work if you have multiple connections. There's actually not many apps that I see that allow you to connect more than one workspace. If you look at something like Notion, I think you can only connect one Slack workspace to it. I don't know if there's a reason for this and I'm about to learn a really harsh lesson on why people only support one workspace, but personally, I live in multiple Slack workspaces, so I want Ellie to work with multiple Slack workspaces. So something like the settings page needs to change. This connect button here won't fly, so I had to alter it where after it's connected, there's a now a completely separate page where you can manage that. Once I figured this out and you can connect with multiple workspaces, I realized that there were a ton of edge cases I didn't think about. So one thing is, what about revoking? What happens when someone wants to disconnect their Slack account? Luckily by building this separate page, I was able to work that in. The code wasn't too bad, um, probably like 50 lines of code and now you can actually revoke it. So what if someone revoked it on Slack's end and my app doesn't know that the authentication was broken? So anytime we pull this data of what workspaces are connected, I also do a check of is it fully connected? If it's missing some sort of permission or just completely revoked, now I can display something that says, hey, you need to re-authenticate this workspace. Okay, so that makes sense in the settings page of the connections broken, but what about in Slack itself? So when someone tries to create a task in Ellie and the connection doesn't work, what happens? Turns out something like GitHub actually displays a bot message that says, hey, you need to authenticate your account. It seems like a lot of apps do this and there's probably a reason, so I'm just gonna go ahead and trust them and go this route. So I needed to code up a little bot to be able to send those messages. So that was a whole other thing to figure out how do you get a bot to send the message. Once all the edge cases were ironed out and I knew that I can create a task, I started going into polish mode. So that original page where you can authorize your Ellie account and do the connection, polish that up to look a lot better, light and dark mode, made it so that the tasks themselves look way cooler when they're coming from Slack. There's a little icon that appears and even a deep link that takes you to the message itself in Slack if you click it. So things like that are really fun to work on at the end because a lot of the other stuff was pretty draining. So this stuff was actually really fun to work on, the polishing. I love UI, I have a lot of fun working on it. Though a lot of the backend stuff was kind of cool to learn too. But yeah, by the time the video goes out, this feature is probably live. You can probably connect your workspace. Here are the final takeaways for this. I think it was a good decision to do it. It was an amazing starter project. I'm actually glad I was naive and thought I can do this in a day. Had I known how complicated this was, that it would take like a week to do this, I probably wouldn't have done it. I probably would have worked on another Ellie feature, maybe even another integration, something else that was a little simpler. I'm glad I did it, learned a lot about OAuth, learned a lot about these edge cases like revoking tokens, how that works. I have no regrets with this. For the next integration, like the Notion integration, I'm probably going to do a ton more research on the documentation. I made a lot of assumptions with this one, especially on OAuth that really slowed me down because I had to rewrite a ton of the code. This is my first real YouTube video. Hope this was interesting to you guys. If there's any video I post on TikTok that you're like, hey, I really want a more in-depth version of this. How did you do it? Please let me know and I'm more than happy to make videos about that. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.